I went into this series completely blind, mainly because I've never heard or seen it mentioned before and just wanted to be surprised by anything, but I wasn't really expecting this. Area of the Animation is a six-episode sci-fi action OVA series directed by Tetsuo Amino and written by Naruhisu Arakawa and Amino once again. It was produced by Ahai Productions and Bandai Visual in 1994. As soon as it starts, we are thrust into this world of spaceships and high-tech and introduced to the main cast. The titular character Iria, her brother Gren, and her friend Bob. All three of these people work together as bounty hunters taking on any job they can find. One day they take on a job to investigate a ship that's been hijacked and free it from its captors. Once aboard this barren metal container, they are informally introduced to the seemingly indestructible killing machine Zerum that broke out of its cargo shipping and went on a killing spree. Tragedy strikes as this creature makes a sudden impact on Iria's life, with Bob being fatally wounded and her brother unknown. After managing to escape and crash landing to another planet, Iria becomes entangled with this being, along with other forces as she desperately tries to put an end to this alien's life before it devastates anywhere else. Being as it was, I wasn't really that enthralled when first watching Iria. The plot seems to be one I'm all too familiar with. Humans come into contact with an alien that provides a difficult challenge, and they have to face all odds to stop it. As it continued, I was hoping that something was going to catch me off guard and throw me for a loop, but sadly that never happened. It goes down all the predictable paths you know of, like how an external corporation wants to use it as a bioweapon, even though the idea is almost always stupid and unbelievable along with how the rich and powerful figures that are in control and responsible of countless lives act stuck up and selfish and make stupid decisions. It's all presented in such a bland way that it doesn't really stand out. Even the pacing I thought was handled poorly. It starts off fine in the first episode, but across six episodes not much of importance happens. A lot of it is just the same situation of Eeria battling Zerum, and guess what? She doesn't win because it isn't the last episode. That and her tactic that doesn't change much. Each episode has its own important scene that adds towards our general understanding. But for me, these moments felt so few and far between with most scenes just feeling pointless as they have no significance. I honestly think that it would have worked better as a movie as there isn't enough here to fill an OVA series. Another aggravating point was how much this series relies on coincidence, mainly due to a certain character being there to help. This is something that is quite subjective, and maybe it won't bother you, but whenever it happened, all I could think was, well, the plot wouldn't progress unless this occurred. It just feels as if the writers were making up as they were going along. If there was one thing I liked about this story, it was the world it takes place in. I'm glad that we didn't have the rules painfully explained, as you can just take it at face value with the large variety in the different planets that are shown and the interesting locations they all offer. It really made the universe feel thought out and expansive, and was my favourite aspect. The gadgets they all use were interesting at first, but they quickly become stupid due to their singular use, such as the one that cuts wires, which can only be used when slicing an elevator cable, or the spinning disc that looks kind of dumb. After a while it feels that anyone can just pull out any kind of gadget if it's convenient enough. The writing was also something that was lacking. On top of a generic plot, it offers a basic identity for a lot of the characters. There's too much telling and not enough showing, meaning that I found it hard to get engaged. And on the odd occasion where they use visuals or motifs, a character will then explain it afterwards, as if the viewer didn't catch on to it the first time. The bad writing was also really quite evident in the numerous locations where holes can be picked in the plot or characters. Not just where things don't make sense, but where it was obvious that certain aspects weren't thought through. Such as, Iria throwing Zerum into the wealthy embassy just based on the selfish comments of one person alone, and ends up killing countless people she didn't even know shared the same opinion. But that's never brought up because she managed to solve the problem in the end, and all the people were bad, I guess. The fact that the characters are shot at continually, but because they're the main characters they never get hit, losing any tension. Just frame it differently or change it up so that this isn't the case. 
How does Gren, Bob, and Fujikura all know about Zirum, but Iria doesn't? They know it's a killing machine, but this news never made its way to Iria. Fujikura even mentions at one point that a law was passed banning anyone from keeping it, so it must be known enough for that to happen, and for people to know about it. I imagine that this is the case so that Iria can learn about it just like the audience, and so it doesn't all have to be exposition. Why did Tada and Tipidate turn Bob into a computer? They didn't have any useful information, and they know that. There's literally no reason to do this, apart from having Iria use Bob to get information she wouldn't have known otherwise and continue the plot. If Zerum can clone itself by assimilating, why does this happen in episode 4 and not beforehand? It could have won more battles if it did this. Also, why does the clone of Gren look similar to him, but all the clones later on look like aliens? If Zerum is an unstoppable predator, how did they manage to capture it to use for tests and figure out its behaviour? They mentioned in the last episode, jokingly, that to find its weak point it would have to be frozen. But if this did happen previously, that it couldn't act in order for the researchers to gather that data, as it would be frozen. We've seen how destructive this thing is, so I can't believe they managed to capture it and keep it long enough to run these tests. Why does Gren morph with Zero when it assimilates countless others? And finally, Iria's final plan to kill Zero has no logical reasoning, and it's just kind of a lucky guess. Maybe these kinds of things won't bother you because you can just ignore it. But to me, it screams that the plot didn't have a lot of effort put into it. And due to this, I was constantly bored while watching this and couldn't find myself engaged at all. And even the characters couldn't save this. As they were as equally as bad as the plot. I couldn't for the life of me figure out Iria's personality. Most of the time, she's stubborn and hot-headed, but in others, she's morose and kind. And I know that this sounds like a good thing, because most of the time it is, having characters show a range of emotion. But with Iria, it all happens quickly, and with almost no justification. Sometimes she's one thing, and sometimes she's another. It left a lot of inconsistency, and in the end it meant that I couldn't care any less about her character. She just portrayed all these bland and one-dimensional stereotypes, and mashing them all together only added to the confusion. Gran and Bob were almost indistinguishable, being older and caring, but also serious, and the relationship between Gran and Iria was awful. They were siblings, and that's all you get on why they even care for each other. From the parts we're shown, they talk, kind of tease each other, and that's it. Zerum is only there to kill, and while it has no personality, I can't exactly blame it, as what are they supposed to do with it? but it's probably for the best that it doesn't speak. To be honest, all the other characters fall under this category as well, of just being one-dimensional stereotypes that lack any depth. The main reason it's like this is, once again, due to the writing. Almost everything of what is said offers very little in terms of personality and has no subtext behind it. It's all just bluntly shown and stopped me from caring about any of these characters or what happens to them. They start and end the story in pretty much the same place. The animation was something that was mixed. I liked most of the character designs and disliked others, with Zero being okay. I feel as if he has too many dark colours, and it's pretty obvious where this came from. However, like previously mentioned, I really like the world this took place in. It has a wide variety in the colour palette and general architecture, and really offers something unique. For the most part, the animation quality was pretty good. There's a lot of detail, and although the quality does sink at some points, I didn't particularly mind. The choreography for the battles was a different story. It's all shown pretty bluntly, offering some dull angles and movements within the battle. They were quite a bore to look at. The soundtrack was pretty decent for the most part. Even though I can only remember a few tracks, they were all pretty catchy and fit the tone. They had a mix of classical and technical instruments, and were generally quite fun to listen to. The English dub isn't great. A lot of the lines sound awkward and lack any impact or character. But then again, that is to be expected of a lot of dubs of this era. I sure could use a shower. It's pretty easy to say that I didn't enjoy area. 
while technically it's sound and has some good aspects like the world, there's just so much that pulls me out of it. Everything that it does, you've probably seen before elsewhere and executed better. The story is generic and full of irrational inconsistencies, and the characters lack any depth. It's quite telling that by the time the last episode rolled around, I was relieved, as I didn't have to watch it anymore. It isn't awful or offensive, just painfully dull. We weren't followed. Then why'd it come here? I don't know. 